And the justified people of God said, yeah. I pray the grace of God will abound in every life in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your truth. We pray, Lord, none of us will miss the provisions of Calvary in Jesus' name. Bless your people once again. And make all of us, each and every one, every brother, every sister, channel of blessing to people around us and beyond us in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now we come to chapter 4 of the epistle of Paul to the Romans. You see, when, as he finished with chapter 3, he brought out faith. And he said, now faith is the key. And the Jewish person is wondering, I don't feel faith. I don't see faith. It's not a tangible thing. I can touch or hold. But circumcision, I can see that one. Circumcision, I can feel that one. And all that happened at circumcision, we can tell. And we can easily see the difference between us and the Gentiles. Now you're talking about something faith, something elusive, something intangible. Okay, we'll go back to Abraham. We'll go back to David. And so now, Paul the Apostle came to David as well as Abraham. The Jews respected Abraham and they respected David. And they exalted the experiences of those two great men, the patriarch and the prince. Yet they singled out circumcision as the basis of acceptance and favor with God. That single act performed on them by their parents before the age of accountability. Circumcision was not the decision of a child. It was the decision of a parent, of the parents. Circumcision was not by the consent of the child. The child did not say, I want her to be circumcised because it's of the age of one week, only eight days, and it was circumcised. And that circumcision done without their consent, done without their personal choice, done before they came to the age of accountability, became the pillar of their religion. And they misplaced their faith. And they misplaced their assurance. And they misplaced their hope of acceptance with God. The right of circumcision hindered their righteousness in conversion. Let's look at chapter 4 now. It says in verse 1, what shall we say then? That Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. For God, for what says the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. They said, the Abraham you are talking about, he didn't have the righteousness by circumcision. He had that righteousness by believing in God. And then look at verse 12. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the face of her father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. He said, this faith is the pillar. This faith is the cornerstone. This faith is the real pivot of our relationship with God. The Abraham you are saying, you are saying that you are following, is you are following the steps of the faith of Abraham. And then he says now, as it was counted to him for righteousness. Look at verse 23. Now it was not reaching for his sake alone that it was imputed unto him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe. 
He said, Abraham came into this experience because he believed. And you are a Jew, you are a Gentile. What do you need? If we believe on him that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for offenses and was raised again for justification, redemption, and righteousness in Christ. He said, that's how Abraham got it, that's how David got it, and all the worthy of old, that's how they got it. That's the only way you can have it too, by faith. There are three things we're considering. Number one, the reckoning of faith before circumcision. The reckoning of faith before circumcision. Number two, the riches of his fullness without circumcision. The riches of his fullness without circumcision. Number three, the requirement of the Father beyond circumcision. The requirement of the Father, Father, that's the Father in heaven, the requirement of our Father beyond circumcision. Number one, the reckoning of faith before circumcision. In uh, Romans chapter one, we're reading from verse one. Romans chapter one, verse one. For what shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he has whereof to glory, but not before God. Nobody can glory before God for what says the scripture. Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. He said that was the basis of the righteousness of Abraham faith. He believed in God. It was counted unto him for righteousness. And so you too today you believe in God. He has sent his only begotten son. He sacrificed him for you. He is your substitute. He is your savior. He is a sacrifice. He is your sin bearer. And once you put your faith in Christ he says that's how you are justified. He says now to him that walketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. If you walk then you are expecting you the remuneration. You're expecting the reward. You're expecting your pay because we owe you something. But he says in verse 5, but to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. We need to tell the converts that it's not by feeling, it's by trusting, it's by faith. The faith is counted for that initial righteousness. And he's talking about Abraham, and he said, that's how he got it. Would you look at Genesis chapter 15, reading from verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, and reading from verse 6. In verse 6, it says, and Abraham, and he believed in the Lord, and he counted thee to him for righteousness. That's far back in Genesis, before Moses, before the circumcision, before the law, before the priesthood, before the Levite system, that the very foundation of relationship with God, reconciliation with God, righteousness in the Lord, is our faith in Him. And these Jewish people, if they had listened, they would have followed that same path of Abraham. In fact, God said in Isaiah chapter 51, Isaiah chapter 51, reading from verse 1, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, and ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, and to the hole of the pit whence ye are deep. Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, your mother. And he says, that one that begat that bear you, for I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. He said, look at those people and see what he did. It wasn't circumcision. It wasn't the work of their hand. I was the one that gave them the righteousness. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 22. Isaiah 45 verse 22. Look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth. Jewish people, if you look at the scriptures, you'll not discriminate against the Gentiles because I want that same righteousness for all the world. It's not the circumcision, it's not the uncircumcision. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. 
Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, reading from verses 1 and 2. Therefore, being justified by faith, not by works, being justified by faith, not circumcision, being justified by faith, not race, not because we're children of Abraham, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have, we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're coming back to Romans chapter 4, and I'm reading now from verse 6. Even as David also describeth the righteousness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without words, he, they, they respected David a lot because he was uh, the first good king. Um, Saul was the first king, but it wasn't acceptable to God. But David, they accepted him, and God accepted him. And he said, look at what David has said. That he said, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without the works, without the works of the Lord. Saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Then he asked him the question, commit this righteousness then upon the circumcision only? And up, or upon the circumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. It brings in Abraham and brings in David in Psalm 32. Psalm 32. We're reading from verse 1 and from verse 2. And it said, it's revealed everywhere in the Old Testament. And so if you want to have the righteousness of God, here is it. Here is it. It is by faith and it is by trusting in the Lord, not trusting in ourselves. In uh, Psalm 32 verse 1, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. In whose spirit there is no guile. The blessings of the Lord, they come upon the people, not those who make sacrifice, but the people who trust in the Lord. Psalm 51, Psalm 51, verses 16 and 17. Psalm 51, verse 16. For thou desirest not sacrifice. It was a sacrificial system that the Old Testament people were depending on. But the people of God, they knew that that was just symbolic. And that's why David said, Thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, Thou wilt not despise. Those Israelites were now coming, they came with goats and they came with sheep, they came with turtle doves and whatever. And as they came, their hearts were no more there. There was no, there was no conviction. There was no repentance. And they just came every year. They offered that thing. And God said, I don't want that. Your oblation and your burnt sacrifice, they are all noisome to me. I don't want them. Come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Do your sins be as scarlet? He'll wash you whiter than snow. Both David and Abraham, in their relationship with God, revealed to us that acceptance with God, salvation and favor from God, and the release from sin's penalty, peace with God, hope of eternal rest and residence in heaven, assurance of reconciliation with God, escape from eternal perdition, is by faith of Christ, faith in Christ, not by the fruit of our labor. By faith in Christ, not the fruit of our labor. Number two, is by conversion through Christ, not circumcision without Him. It's by conversion through Christ. He comes to convert us. He comes to change us. And it is by that conversion, not circumcision, 
without him. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from uh, chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Verse 26, turn to you. First, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Assurance of reconciliation with God, eternal rest and residence in heaven is not by, it's by the sacrifice of Christ, not by the sacrifice of man. Sacrifice of Christ, not by the sacrifice of man. And number four, it is through imputed righteousness, not self-righteousness. It is through the imputed righteousness, through what Christ has done. And then he offers to us his righteousness, all our own righteousnesses, they are filled there. So we're looking at uh, Isaiah. In Isaiah, the prophet of the Old Testament, he told them, he told them they were not listening. Isaiah chapter uh, 64. Isaiah chapter 64 verse 6. It says, but we're all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousnesses in the plural as filled the rags. And we all do fade away as they leave. And our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. But now we come to the Lord. And he gives us his own righteousness. He clothes us in righteousness. He gives us the robe of righteousness. That's why it says in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me. Is the work of his son. He has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. It is his incorruptible word, not our insufficient works. It is his blood by which we are saved. It is not by our infant baptism. It is by Christ's grace. It is not by man's goodness. That's what the Lord is telling us. He's bringing us to faith. And he's telling us salvation. That's by grace through faith. And he's telling us righteousness. That's by grace through faith. Reconciliation with God by grace through faith. Abraham got it that way. And believers will get it that way. Point number two now. The riches of his fullness without circumcision. The riches of his fullness without circumcision. We're coming to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, we're reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 4, verse 9. Commit this blessed day upon the circumcision only, or upon the circumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was circumcision or in uncircumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. It says, go back to Abraham and look at the riches of the fullness of the blessings of God upon him and see what he had at that time, even before circumcision. Look at verse 11, and you receive the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which he had. He had it. That righteousness, he added those riches, he added those blessings. Now, the circumcision came later as a seal, as a token, as a sign to show that he was already in righteousness and reconciliation with God, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that the righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Look at verse 12, the father of circumcision, to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. You see the emphasis of Paul the apostle. He said, 
which Jewish people have missed it. We thought all the blessings are coming through circumcision. And if a Gentile is going to have those blessings, he must be circumcised and become a proselyte and become like an imitation of a Jew before the blessings can come. But he said, but look at our father Abraham. He had all these riches of his fullness before circumcision. He tells us for the promise in verse 13 that it should be heir of the world was not not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. He actually laid it on them. He wanted them to understand that they had missed it all together. In verse 14, for if they which are of the law be heirs, then faith is made void. And the promise made of non effect, because the law worketh wrong. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, 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 it is of faith. Relationship with God, therefore, it's of faith. Righteousness, therefore, it's of faith. And the riches of his fullness, therefore, it's of grace. And the Gentiles will not be denied because it's of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham who is the father of all souls, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and call it those things which be not as though they were. And, and that's what uh, Paul the Apostle was assuring the uh, Israelites. He was saying, don't discriminate against the Gentiles, against the people who are not circumcised, because all these blessings are coming. And they are coming upon you and upon them without circumcision. Without circumcision. Uh, can we think about Abraham for a moment? Because uh, that's what Paul the Apostle is saying. Uh, and look at what he had. The riches of his fullness. Number one, uh, he had righteousness. Number two, he had relationship with God. Number three, he had recovery. Recovery. He recovered everything. He had not been circumcised. Number four, he had restoration. Restoration. And then number five, he had reward. Number six, he had reassurance. And then number seven, he had his requests met. Not circumcised yet. Number eight, he had resurrection. And then number nine, he had rest and residence with God. And then he had eternal recognition. All by faith. Quickly, briefly look at them. We're looking at Genesis chapter 15. Genesis chapter 15, we're looking at verse 6. Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, and he believed in the Lord. That's Abraham, and was counted to him for righteousness. Number one, he had righteousness. He had relationship with God. He had relationship with God with that righteousness. Isaiah chapter 41. We're looking at verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. But thou, O Israel, art my servant, and Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Abraham, my friend. Because he believed in the Lord, was the friend of God, not because of circumcision, faith. Brought him into relationship. We're looking at Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13, this before circumcision. In Genesis chapter 13, we're looking at verse 14. Genesis 13, we're reading from verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abraham, after that Lord had separated from him, lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, and eastward, and westward, for all the land which thou seest to thee, will I give it unto thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth. And so that if a man can count the dust of the earth, then the seed also shall be numbered. Arise and walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it. For I will give each unto thee recovery because lord had chosen everything because abraham said 
whatever you want to go and choose whatever remains i will take and not choose the better part but god said abraham you recover everything it is given unto you now apart from the recovery of the land not look at restoration we're looking at chapter 14 chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 16 in verse 16 it tells us and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother lord and his goods and the women also and the people but look at what follows in verse 18 Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was of the he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him and he said blessed be Abraham of the most high of the most high God possessor of heaven and earth and he blessed the most and, be, and blessed be the most high God which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand and he gave him tithes of all, all that before circumcision. Paul the apostle was trying to recollect and remind the children of Israel this circumcision you are talking about, you are talking as if we are at a zero level without circumcision, as if we have nothing without circumcision. But how about our father Abraham? The father Abraham that got this right of circumcision. He had the riches of God's fullness even before this circumcision you are talking about. Look at chapter 15 verse 1. Chapter 15 verse 1. After these things, the Lord uh, of the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision and said, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield, I am thy great reward. You don't only possess land. I am yours. All I have is yours. You inherit everything that I've got. All that before circumcision. He had reassurance. Look at verse 3, verse 4. And Abraham said, Behold to me that has given no seed. And lo, one that is born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. He had that reassurance even before the circumcision came. And then he had the revelation of God. He had his own request. Look at verse 5. It says, And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven. What else can you desire? What else can you demand? And tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said to him, so shall thy seed be. The point is, no circumcision now. And it was just by faith. And that's what Paul the apostle was reminding the, you know, the um, children of Israel, the Jewish people of his time. He said, we have missed it. We have missed it. And as you look at religious people today, they go to church and uh, they do not understand all the riches of the fullness of God by faith. They say, we must do this. You know, there are people that will tell you, you go to your backyard and dig out. There's something there they planted there you must dig it out and then you take the digger and you're digging we we'll say what are you doing i want to dig out something because there's something here that is uh, not allowing the blood of jesus to work that is not allowing the sacrifice of jesus to be effective in my life i must dig it out but it says abraham did not dig out anything and those who went before us did not dig out anything. Why is it we are following the traditions of men and the things that cannot save? That's what Paul the Apostle was telling them. He said, leave all these rituals alone. Leave all these circumstances alone and come and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and everything of the kingdom will be yours in Jesus' name. Somebody said, Amen. Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. And when Abraham was 90, and 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, And the Almighty God walk before me, and be thou perfect. And that, that's the chapter that brought the circumcision. But in that verse 1, the circumcision had not come at that time. In fact, he had rejoicing, rejoicing. Those Israelites missed it. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 56. John chapter 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days, 
uh, there is no circumcision here. The spirit he was looking ahead. The Lord shall provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. Not on the basis of circumcision, although he had been circumcised then, but on the basis of faith. He said, the Lord shall provide himself a lamb for the sacrifice. And the Lord did. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it, and he was glad. He had residence in heaven eventually. When Lazarus died, the angels took Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. And everyone that died, they went to Abraham's bosom. Because he was circumcised? No. Because he had faith in God. And that faith in God gave him everything. And that faith in God gives us everything today. The riches of his fullness. And look at Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm reading here from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11, we're reading from verse 8. It tells us, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city. For he looked for a city. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Then he tells us in verse 16, And now the desire, a better country, that is and heavenly, where, where, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared, for he had prepared for them a city. You see that residence in heaven, rest in heaven, without not circumcision, by faith. And then he had resurrection. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up. Resurrection. Able to raise him up. Even from the dead. From whence also he received him in a figure. Today, on the walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham, can receive the riches of his fullness. You will. You will receive. It's provided for you already. And we don't have to go to River Jordan. I need water. We don't have to go to the Red Sea. I want some water. We don't have to have oil in the bottle. I want, I want uh, deliverance. We don't have to have this or have that. Look at Calvary. And look at what the Lord has done for you. And do not follow after the error of the Jewish people. Circumcision, circumcision, circumcision. Water, oil, candle, whatever. But now, you are enriched in Christ in Jesus' name. All things are yours. All things are mine. All things are mine. All things are mine. All things are mine. In Christ I possess everything. Be like Abraham. Walk in the faith of Abraham. They are yours in Jesus' name. Point number three. The requirement of the Father beyond circumcision. The requirement of the Father beyond circumcision. We're coming to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 18. Who oh, against hope, believed in hope. That's what he's telling us. Against hope, when the situation appears hopeless, believe in hope, like Abraham, that he might become the father of many nations. You'll be a father, a mother of many through conversion in Jesus' name. According to that which is spoken, so shall the seed be, and be not weak in faith. Not circumcision and not being weak in faith. Not candle and not being weak in faith. Not church membership and not, not being weak in faith. Not institutional service ceremony and not being weak in faith. He considered not his own body. Now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. 
There are great promises the Lord has given you. You will not stagger the promise of God. And that's what Abraham did. God gave him a promise and it was almost unbelievable. It was incredible and it was almost impossible. And yet he believed. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You'll possess everything Christ has provided. You will have everything Christ has promised and everything coming by the blood of Jesus and coming from the cross of Jesus, coming from the sacrifice of Jesus, you are going to possess in Jesus' name. But you will not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You will be strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded, fully persuaded, fully persuaded, fully persuaded of salvation, it will be yours. Fully persuaded of the peace of God, it will be yours. Fully persuaded of sanctification and holiness, it will be yours. Fully persuaded of the possibility of His power upon your life, it will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Fully persuaded of your healing, you are healed in Jesus' name. Fully persuaded of deliverance, you are delivered in Jesus' name. Fully persuaded of the riches of His glory upon your life, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. You will not be weak anymore. You will not fall. You will not be discouraged. All the things that try to make you say, I cannot, I cannot, you can. Somebody there said you can. You are not looking at your body. You are not looking at your resources. You are not looking at the scarcity. You are not looking at the dryness. You are not looking at anything. You are looking at Christ at Calvary. You are looking at your God who is in heaven. He will do it in your life. And therefore, he said, because he was fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. There will be a performance in your life. And it says, and therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. It was imputed to him for righteousness. And it says, now it was not reaching in for his sake alone, but that it was imputed to him, but for us also, for me also, for me also. For me also, I get something today. I have something today. For me also, for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. Any believer there? Any believer there? Where is he there? Where is she there? It will be fulfilled. This year will be a different year. The year of the power of God. The year of the goodness of God. The year of the blessings of God flowing into your life in Jesus' name. Spiritual blessing. Material blessing. Family blessing. Kingdom blessing. Ministerial blessing. The Lord will load your blessing. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again by justification. But you know, the pivot, the center, the secret, how we're going to have this, look at chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Mark that now, your Bible, in your heart. He staggered not, number one, at the promise of God. He staggered not, number two, at the presence of God. He staggered not, number three, at the performance of God. He staggered not, number four, at the perfection of God. He staggered not, Number five, at the power of God. He staggered not, number six, at the precept of God. He staggered not, number seven, at the products of God. He staggered not, number eight, at the purpose of God. There are things that came from God to Abraham in their relationship. That could have made him to stagger any time. But no, he will not be staggered. Nothing will make you stagger. 
Nothing will make you doubt. If you can look at Abraham and say this man was fully persuaded. This patriarch, this father was fully persuaded. And he staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. What promise? Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18. Reading from verse 11. Genesis chapter 18. Reading here from verse 11. In verse 11 we're told, Now Abraham and Sarah were old and went streaking in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Verse 14. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. He staggered not at the promise of God. Humanly speaking, impossible. Historically looked at, it had never been done like that before, impossible. And all around him, and also in the body, it's like, this is impossible. And God made the promise. And God said, is there anything too hard for the look at your life, your spiritual life, that this is where you are going to be? You are going to be there. Your ministry life, this is where you are going to be. You are going to be there. If you look all around you, if you look at your past, if you look at your history, it's like, I've never been like that. But this year you are going to be like that. It's staggered not at the promise of God. Number two, it's staggered not at the, pro at the presence of God. Presence of God. Chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 22. In chapter 18, we're looking at verse 22. In verse 22, and the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. And Abraham stood yet before the Lord, the Almighty God, the Most High, came from heaven. And he came to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. And standing in his presence, he was not, he will not stagger at the presence of God. Verse 23, and Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou destroy the righteous or the wicked? You know the story. All alone in the presence of God. He didn't think that the fire of God will consume him first. Like I said, woe is unto me. Because I'm an unclean man. Woe unto me. Because I've seen the Lord. He didn't stagger at the presence of God. He did not stagger at the performance of God. After he prayed that prayer, then in chapter 19, look at what God did. Chapter 19, verse 27. In verse 27, and Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. And he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah and toward all that land of the plain. And beheld, and lo, the smoke of the country went up as smoke as the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham and sent out Lot out of the midst of the overthrow. And he overthrew the cities in the which Lot dwelt. He staggered not. At the performance of God. Chapter 17 verse 1. In chapter 17 verse 1. When Abraham was 90 years old and 9. The Lord appeared to Abraham. And said unto him. I am the almighty. Almighty God. Walk before me. And be thou perfect. That's where some people will sign up. God. How can I be? There's no Moses yet. There's no law yet. God, how can I be? There's no preacher yet. There's no pastor yet. Lord, how can I be? There's no guide yet. There's no counselor yet. Lord, how can that be? There's no Calvary yet. And Christ has not yet come. Lord, how can, how can that be? Walk before me and be thou perfect. He staggered not at the perfection of God. 
It started not at the power of God. Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 20. It started not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded. No prayer partner. And be fully persuaded. Nobody to encourage him and lift him up. And be fully persuaded. No congress, no convention, no retreat. And be fully persuaded. Uh, there was no place that you know he could get with other believers and renew his faith all alone by himself. He believed that what he has promised was able also to perform. I pray that will be your Lord in Jesus' name. Give me a good resounding amen. amen. He did not stagger at the precept of God. He did not stagger at the precept of God. Genesis chapter 21 verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight, because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman, in all that Sarah I said unto thee, hearken to her voice, for Isaac in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Verse 14, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took the bread, and a bottle of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, and a child, and sent her away. And she departed. And wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. The Lord said, The Lord said, Ishmael, let him go. Hagar, the mother, let her go. And she, he did not stagger at the precepts of God. Sarah said, That woman will not stay, that child will not stay. And Abraham thought, How can that be? You gave this woman to me when you were not able to bear a child. Remember this Old Testament. Remember this before the law. Remember, no written law at this time. And he thought, okay, if you give her to me, that's all right. And now a child had been born. And now Isaac had come. And Sarah said, Abraham, I have something to tell you. Say on, this woman and the child must leave this house forever. And God said, Abraham, that's exactly what you are going to do. That's my precept. And he did not stagger at the precept of the Lord, of God. Now the serious one here. We're looking at Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 1 and verse 2. Genesis chapter 21. 22 rather. Verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after these things. That God did tempt, test, tried Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son, Ishmael is gone, thine only son, this is the only son now, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a bunch offering. Upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Great paradox. He just told me now in the previous chapter, chapter 21. Send Ishmael away with the mother. Because this Isaac will be your seed. And all the promises I've given you through this Isaac, I will fulfill that. And then you are telling me to take that same Isaac. What a great paradox. And go offer him for you as a bond offering. He did not stagger at the paradox of God. He, didn't, he did not stagger at the purpose of God. What's the purpose of God for this? I don't know. He didn't know. That's what I'm saying. And if you had asked him, do you know his purpose? No, I don't know his purpose. But as he wants, but that's what he wants. I will not stagger at the purpose of God. Look at verse 3. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass. And the two and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for burnt offering, 
and rose up and went to the place which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here. Well, they asked, I and the lad, look at this, will go yonder, look at this, and wash him and come again unto you. We're going to wash him, and both of us will come back. You'll come back. Resurrection power will be in your life, you'll come back. The power that revives will come into your life, you will come back. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and in night. And he went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here, I, here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And this man did not stagger at the paradox and at the purpose of God. And Abraham said, My son, tell me. My son, tell me. In your life, God will provide. In your family, God will provide. Even nothing you don't understand, God will provide. In every circumstance in your life, God will provide. My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So... They went both of them together. And he came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar. He didn't cry. And Abraham built an altar. He didn't mourn. And Abraham built an altar. He didn't groan. And Abraham built an altar. He wasn't shedding tears. And Abraham built an altar. He wasn't doubtful. He built an altar there. And laid the wood in order. And bound Isaac his son. And laid him on the altar. Upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his sand. And took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the the Lord called unto him. This is a man of faith. This is a man of faith. The Israelites missed this. There's no faith. They were dry, devoid of faith. Only circumcision, circumcision. I pray this faith of Abraham will rise up in your heart in Jesus' name. Impossibilities will become possible in your life. Your ministry will grow to an unlimited extent in Jesus' name. Angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I, I'm always here. Here am I, here am I, here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou any sin unto him. For now I know, now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son. From me, this was God talking. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him, what? Did God provide? I said, did God provide? Did God disappoint? Are you going to be disappointed? Will God provide for you? He will. I said, he will. Behind him, he saw the ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. Somebody there shout Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah. Every day of your life shout it out. Jehovah. Every month of this year shout it out. Jehovah. You were not lack. The provider will go with you. The provider will provide for you. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. You'll hear his voice. And he said, by myself have I sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, and only son, in blessing I will bless thee. In blessing, I will bless thee. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. As the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate 
of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 16. Here the word of God tells us, Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to that which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all soul. Be not weak in faith, verse 19, you will not be weak in faith. He considered not his own body, you will not consider the things you see. Now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith. What is he? He was strong in faith. What is she? Strong in faith, giving glory to God, fully persuaded. Are you persuaded? Partially pro uh, persuaded? How are you persuaded? Fully persuaded that what God had promised. Salvation, what God had promised. Sanctification, what God had promised. Healing, what God had promised. Deliverance, what God had promised. Power, what God had promised. Conquering power, what God had promised. All things that you need. He was, he is able to perform it. There will be a performance in your life today. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. A performance in your life. A performance in your life. Open your mouth. Tell the Lord you will not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. You are fully persuaded that whatever God has promised is going to be the year of fulfillment.